Well, hello everyone. My name is Chuck Hill. I'm with Remax Real Estate and we're here today. I've got my great friend, Dave Wood with San Luis Obispo Caregivers. And we're gonna to talk today about helping your elderly parents move. Dave, I'm looking forward to this. I am too, Chuck. I think this is something we've been talking about for a long time now, and it's long overdue. I think it'll be a popular topic. And if there's only one other person watching this, that's okay, because we're happy to talk to you about this. I <laughs> think it's a, a very challenging topic. And and uh, why don't we just jump right in? I say, let's not waste time. Let's go for it. Okay. So if you think moving is stressful, right? Try moving an elderly parent. Yeah, as you can only imagine, a lot of times you have an elderly parent that has lived in the same place for many, many years, um, maybe doesn't have that many changes happening to their their house. And um, today we're going to we're going to set up uh, some some checklists and some tips for you on how to work through this process. So we're going to we're going to attempt to give you uh, an idea on how to plan that move. We're going to give you some tips that you're you're going to want, kind of the the before, the during, and the after, and then what options exist for you, whether it's downsizing, assisted living, caregivers in the home. We're going to go over all these different things. Uh, so, planning move for your parent or your elderly parent. Um, one the the first thing you got to be thinking about is their health. You know, and a lot of times. Uh, my company helps people find assisted living. So, so what what my role here today is to talk to you some about the the senior care aspects of things and the maybe even the emotional strain that it puts on not only the the elderly person but the elderly person's family. Um, and then Chuck, of course, uh, Chuck Hill is a is a realtor uh, that covers the entire county of San Luis Obispo County. Um, it's got a ton of experience. How many years, Chuck? Oh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> 29 years. 29 years. Enough, huh? Yeah. Yes. So yes. 29 years. So he's been doing this a very long time and has picked up a few tricks of the trade. And we want to talk about, you know, specifically how it's different working with somebody who's a senior and the family members uh, working with their parents going through this, this transition. So this is a big emotional component. Anytime you, you want to talk about moving, of course, it's, it's very hard to move, but it's, it's even harder for people that have been in one place for a, a long, long time. And then you, you layer upon that some of this uh, family dynamics, I like to call it, you know, with siblings and, and all that we, we have, you know, a hard time, you know, making these moves. Um, and then, of course, that the house itself, you know, uh, is it going to be easier for for your parent to move and downsize so they don't have to do all this maintenance that it takes to, you know, some of these houses are, you know, four or five bedroom homes that uh, have really been left behind. Uh, time has left them behind. What we're suggesting here is get to this conversation as early as possible the earlier the better you are when you're talking about when you're talking about things like moving to an assisted living place i mean they're going to put up a wall um but part of that is asking open ended questions to your parents so you don't want to ask those yes and no type questions but you want to you want to get them in in a situation like where would you want to live mom you know where where are the place you know if you couldn't live at home anymore um tell me about the place that you would like to live. Um, but the more that they can feel part of this process, the better success that we think you're going to have. You know, timing really, really is everything. You know, that's a, just kind of a life principle, but, you know, especially in this situation um, and staying in control of it is, is important as well. And like you said before, the earlier start you get in this conversation, the better, but let's talk about, you know, when the things to consider out real quickly when it is time to sell the home, you'd be thinking, and this is why it's good to start the conversation with your parent early. If we're going to think about selling a property, well, what time of year is the best to sell? And that's different in, all, in a lot of different circumstances, different parts of the country, different times of year are better to sell. What are the market conditions? Okay, anybody who's been paying attention at all recently, interest rates have gone up, they're coming back down. You know, there's a lot of things that happen in the real estate market that are very dynamic that you need to consider. 
work with an experienced real estate agent. Okay, work with somebody who understands what the process is and who can also you know, empathize with the situation and has a perspective on, on life you know, that will allow them to give you the right advice and has experience doing this. Okay, this is a, a very special and a very intricate process in have, you know, finding a new place for mom and dad. Um, so you want somebody who's gonna be able to, to handle that because unfortunately things do happen uh, to our older parents. And if something does happen that requires you to move quickly, you want to be ready for it, but then also you want to have that communication going with your with your professional. Then we're talking about, you know, I, I love that picture. That's such a great picture. The Brady Bunch house is just <laughs> perfect. Um, but making the house sellable, and this is so critical. It's so critical. And this is where you want to have conversations with the family and with your real estate professional and with, you know, with all the people involved, because there's things that you need to do to achieve top dollar. And very quickly, there's a quick list. You need to declutter. You need to clean the home up, make some repairs if they're needed. Deferred maintenance is something to be aware of. Lots of times this has happened on the homes of our, of our older parents where they just haven't been keeping up on the trim paint or on the roof repairs or on the landscaping. There's things that just kind of deteriorate that we need to be aware of because they make a difference when it comes to getting the maximum value for that property when you sell it. Then we talk about things like staging the home. Okay, if staging means placing furniture in certain locations. It doesn't necessarily mean renting thousands of dollars worth of furniture and stuff, but it does mean maybe moving some furniture around, taking some paintings down, putting things up. Okay, there's a lot of different things that can be done there. You may need a storage facility. Okay, sometimes in the decluttering process, we need to put something. So we want to look at that. And then upgrades. This is a very one, something we need to be careful with because at this circumstance for a lot of families, you aren't necessarily wanting to spend a lot of money. So we need to be careful on the upgrades that we're doing. But at the same time, sometimes for you know not too much money, you can do some critical uh, upgrades that can really help you achieve top value. But that you know, these are great items and this is all part of the conversation. Well, and, and our goal in this presentation too isn't... Um to get you more overwhelmed. Right. <laughs> and I, Which there's is what so I could many, well be doing. <laughs> yeah. And so many things do go into selling a home and, and doing a good job selling a home. And like we talked about earlier, the, the emotional component is there. And that one of those emotional components, aside from family dynamics, is overwhelm because that really, you know, pushes people away from making their best decision when, you know, maybe, maybe it is time to sell the house, but they're like, oh gosh, I don't want to have to, you know, sell all the stuff and get rid of, you know, uh, donate this and, you know, do an estate sale. It just seems so overwhelming. Well, I think one of the real advantages of working with somebody like Chuck is, is that he's got all these contacts already built in over these 29 years. So he kind of knows the guys to use and the ones not to use. And, and it really does simplify a lot of this listing. And we're going to do a lot of listing today because that's part of what our promise is, is to give you the information. But I don't want you to be overwhelmed. You want to bring in great people who can help you and advise you and everything to avoid the overwhelm. That's really one of our biggest things is to make this the easiest, maybe even enjoyable process. Yeah. You know, to, well, let's not get crazy. Huh? I, no. <laughs> it, 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 it could happen. It could yeah. happen. <laughs> You've seen it. Yeah, I, I have seen it. I yeah. have seen it. And, what, and that's what we really take very seriously. And I know you do too in your process. Yeah. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Sure. You know, it's that. That's why we're here mm -hmm. is to help people achieve their goal. And that's really, really what the bottom line is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, back to it right here, bang for the buck, we're going to figure out the right price for the, for the property. Okay. Um, some, you have to make some decisions kind of like I was leading to as far as spending money on improvements, you know, are you going to fix everything to maximize that, that sale price? Are you just going to take care of some major things? You know, is there a roof leak that really should be taken care of? Is there a broken window? You know, those things should be taken care of. Or maybe, you know what, you're done and you're not, you don't want to do a thing. You really, it's just a little bit too much home sell as is as well. You know, there's different strategies that go with all three of those, you know, ways of, of going about selling. We want to get all of our players in place. The biggest part of this though, is that middle one there is managing the emotions. And this is where the communication is critical 
I've, I've found that people who aren't being communicated with, who don't feel like they don't know what's going on, that's when emotions start to rise up and, and things can get a little bit more challenging as far as what's going on and be very clear about what we're doing. And another piece of that is staying very organized. So communication and organization. If we keep those, if we really stay on top of those things, most of the time, it helps people, you know, be able to make the right decisions. Okay, and then planning the move. Okay, again, a great list here. And, you know, we could spend all day on this one, but, you know, where you're, where you're leaving, we've kind of talked about, the, are there issues with the property, clutter removal, staging, repairing, you know, all those things we just talked about, but that's a great list right there. And stuff, but where you're going is all the different options for the future, right? So a lot of people move, uh, maybe there's a little medical stuff going on, maybe it's mobility issues, some, some things like that, maybe it's dementia or forgetfulness, you know, playing a role, playing a part. And uh, many, many people want to live closer to their family. Um, so uh, one of their goals might be to come live with a family. Maybe, maybe some people are just trying to downsize, but they're still able to live by themselves. Um, there's, there's different uh, apartments that just are better suited for uh, elderly people. Um, and then there's then there's something called an independent community. An independent community doesn't provide any assistance in terms of caregiving, but they provide they provide a community that's safe. They provide a couple meals a day. They provide things like um, events, community music, um, sometimes happy hours. You know, <laughs> like ways to get uh, people activated and um, Really, we saw this over the last couple of years that, you know, um, people got isolated during, you know, the COVID years. And, yeah. and so, you know, we really saw that affecting people. You know, we saw it affecting all of us, honestly, but we really saw it with our elderly people that just couldn't get out and, and maybe get their groceries and things like that. So, you know, those are those are big factors of being in a community. Um Assisted living. Assisted living is having some assistance, but it's more like uh, you have access to caregiving. You don't really have a caregiver assigned to you, helping you, helping you all the time. Um, and then there, of course, are special places for people that have memory issues. Call those memory care facilities. There's also board and care communities, which are homes that have been converted into a little small care facility. So it's kind of the closest thing to being at home. You're, you're living in someone else's home, in a room in somebody else's home, and you have caregivers in that in there. And those are geared mostly towards people that have memory issues. Um, finding a caregiver, say, say they move into a place and they wanna, they wanna hire a caregiver. That's something that my, my company helps people uh, accomplish so they can have a caregiver in the home. Maybe it's four hours, three days a week, maybe it's 24 hours a day. It just really depends on what, what people are looking for. Well, so I get a lot of resistance uh, from, from sure. the older person, you know, who yeah. maybe is resisting against caregiving or resisting against going into a care home because, um, because they don't think that they're that old. You know, I, I have this thing that I, I tell uh my clients, you know, it's like most people think that they're about 10 to 15 years younger than they are, right? You're 78 or you're 92 and you think you're 78, then um, you're, you're not able to catch yourself when you're falling. You know, you're, you are starting to make some, some poor decisions or, you know, things. And so what I'll sometimes ask them, uh, the older person is what is your biggest fear? And, and often, if they're living alone, they'll say that I've fallen. And, you know, it's the whole I've fallen and I can't get up, right? So they're Very afraid real. that they're going to fall and no one's going to know. Absolutely. Well, this, and this is kind of a, a case study right here, right? We've got Ralph and John. Um, John is the son, he lives in Virginia, and Ralph is the dad who lives in a community we call Heritage Ranch here in our area of San Luis Obispo County. And David is you know, working for Ralph and they've toured, they toured a few locations here locally. Um, and Ralph has found a place. 
you know, he's in his, in his new spot and uh, assisted living is going good. And then what I do is I help both of them, uh, Ralph and John, get organized, okay? Figure out the improvements that need to be made on the property and we maximize the return on the selling of the house. So all the things we've kind of talked about, we actually put into place, you know, for, for Ralph and John and, and it works out nicely. Now, you know, Ralph was still you know, pretty together guy. I took him to, oh, I don't know, six uh, different assisted living communities in the area. And he sat there and walked through every aspect of his life, you know, and and uh, asked for exactly what he wanted from each person toward every location. And, you know, it was a bit of a grind, you know, at times for not for not just for me, but for for uh, Ralph as well, because so so I take take people through these places. I ask the right questions. I'm able to um, kind of really focus in on what it is that they're looking for and what's the best places around here. You know, I've been all the different places, so I can I could really figure out, you know, after, you know, 20 minutes or so talking to somebody and like, OK, we need to go check out these three places. You know, these would be the best the best three and, you know, it just saves a ton of time, a ton of money, um, and uh, gives you the most important thing is that emotional, that emotional piece that you, you feel like, okay, well, I know all the options now. I'm not, not taking a risk on going on Google and seeing what's advertising at me, or, uh, you know, I heard this was a good place, but unless you know that you've, you've kind of looked at all the different options, or at least all the options have been available to you, you never have that really good feeling at the end of the day. Uh, made his decision that he he ended up at a place that recognized his time in the service, and now he's got a, a big plaque on the wall with about what about fifteen to twenty other veterans up there. And so when he when he walks by, you know, he's got a little gleam in his eye, and he's you know feeling pretty good about himself. And um, oh, just where he was living before, he was by himself, mm -hmm. and he's a very social guy. Yeah. And having other people around who, you know, want to talk as well and are willing to have a, a nice, you know, real meaningful conversation. Great, great guy, great family. His two daughters very involved as well. So it's it's a great example, I think, of of working with us, but but also just how how easy we've made that that process for folks. Yep, absolutely. So here's here's just a, a look. You know, a lot of people have a lot of people have in their mind. You know, I don't want to go to a nursing home, right? Well, I don't know about you guys, but if you look at this picture here, it doesn't really look like a nursing home. In this, you've got a lot of this negative uh, stereotyping. You know, and and when you go to a nurse nursing home or a skilled nursing facility, those are facilities, but assisted living is more of a community, right? You know, and so it's really, I mean, if you think about all the millions of dollars that have been put into understanding um, elderly people, seniors that, that want to have an active lifestyle, what do they want to do? Well, they want to watch movies sit together. They want to be in a, a movie theater like setting. They want to have popcorn with their movies. You know, they want to, they want to be dazzled a little bit, right? They want to be able to go on community um, at excursions and and things like that so these places that you that you go you know they typically do have a big fireplace in the lobby and they have place for happy hour and 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 it's a lot cooler and a lot nicer and i know chuck i've taken a hey, one thing is living living with the family um and a lot of times and, and chuck i know you can speak to this as well but looking for a for a new place maybe for the um for the family looks for a place that has a granny unit, or maybe you can speak, speak to that a little bit. Well, it, and every family is different, right? Everybody's going to, some people think, oh my goodness, this would never, that would never work to have mom or dad live with us. In other circumstances, it would be great. And there's all, and there's everything in between. So it's everything from, you know, mom or dad taking a room in your house to, like you said, maybe, um, maybe, the resources that mom or dad have, they can bring to the table by selling their property can add more to the picture. And you can actually purchase a different property. You know, maybe a, in the son or the daughter or can come together along with mom or dad's mm -hmm. 
abilities and purchase a different property where everybody can be on the same property together. So you have that you know, security and that ability to kind of be a part of each other's lives. You can kind of take care of mom or dad and uh, you know, have them real close by. So you know, that's a possibility. You know, I see that a lot in the ranch, like, you know, on ranches out here in uh, North County, um, yep. that there's families, of course, you know, that they, they will often have uh, another house out there that they're, they're going to move their folks into, or that maybe they, maybe they have, maybe they have a uh, room to add on and then they, they, you know, do a little project add on, but like, you know, when they're, when they're building it, they're building it with a bigger shower, you know, easier to access, um, every, you know, putting all the, the grab bars and, and all the things that make things really accessible for mm-hmm. people that need care. When, when, you're, when your parents are doing so well that they're moving to a place and they don't need any care, independent living might be the greatest, the, the best choice for them. Or even a, a community like what the traditions, you know, like a golf course community yeah. um, that is is great for those active seniors that are just like uh, connecting with family members and or just living on the central coast. Talked about it, but you know that assisted living, you've got that a la carte option of like just needing care when you when you or just receiving care when you need it, mm-hmm. and then of course memory care, which is a, a higher level of care you really do need uh to be watching watching people in this situation all of the time um and so the assisted living communities will often have a memory care unit that is a secured area for folks um so they can't wander off or get in trouble in any other way there um and then um there's also that board and care option which is those smaller residential homes that that um, you know will typically have about two caregivers there, but they're overseeing say six residents at, at one time. So I call that more of a zone defense as opposed to one-on-one <laughs> having a caregiver that yeah. comes in and, and actually helps one-on-one, which is another big part of my business. Well, San Luis Obispo County, Slow County. And there's a reason why we call it Slow County because everything tends to move a little slower here, which That's is it. most people like. Okay. Not quite as slow as when I moved here a long time ago, but uh, it's, it's still slower than other places. But people move here, you know, for what we've got, but for in, individuals, you know, it could be the family is here. Okay. They want to be close to a loved one. But, Again, but Chuck, there. Chuck, how could you, if you're 85 years old, how could you live in LA? I, I wouldn't want to. I couldn't live in LA if I was 85. No. I couldn't live in LA where I'm at now. No. <laughs> I, I was there a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't wait to get back here. I know you almost have to go every once in a while just to feel it and, and, and feel that traffic Yeah, and get the heck out of there. So you appreciate what we got around here. So Central Valley. Oh yeah. Fresh air. I, I can't tell you how many people I've helped find a home over here because they lived, you know, their whole life in the Central Valley with all of the pesticides and the fertilizers and yeah. the dust. And they literally can't breathe anymore. And they come over here and they can breathe. You know, honestly, I think we want to just say that we're here for you. Um, we want to we want to help you. Um, so what we're going to do as part of this presentation is we're going to give you a link to uh, download some of our checklists that we've created to make life a little bit easier for you. Uh, we want to invite you to work with both uh, Chuck and myself if you are interested in and looking at your options. And uh, this little picture down at the bottom here, I really like because I think that's what the motivation behind most of the moves are um, from, from another area is, is really connecting our families. And you know that same emotion that we've been talking about with the move um, exists and some you know sharing that experience and the wisdom of grandparents and, and things like that is is a is a beautiful thing and these you know we get one life to live and so if we can we can bring our loved ones a little bit closer to us and and be a bigger part of their life uh then you know i say i'm all i'm all in i i agree with you 100 percent. you know it's uh and i bring this back to just you and me as we kind of wrap this up yeah it's we are all in and i know it i know it's in your heart to to do you know, the most good out there. And that, and this is really about helping people 
at a certain point in life when uh, when a, a lot of good advice and some guidance and some experience can really, really make a big difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. I think we hey. did it. All right. Very good. Hey, and <laughs> we'll just uh, we'll, we'll uh, do this again soon. All right. Sounds good.